1975, curator William Jenkins put together an exhibition at George Eastman House in Rochester. The exhibition was called New Topographics, Photographs of Man-Altered Landscapes. Initially, this exhibition didn't get much traction and viewers described the photographs as dull and boring. 47 years later, we can look back at this exhibition as a revolutionary moment within photography. This modernist style of documentary photography is still relevant today as human settlements continue to expand within the environment. The photographs have been described as neutral or banal, or epitomizing a deadpan or expressionless gaze. But it is the very lack of immediate impact that forces one to explore the contents within the frame and to confront our own relationship with the landscape around us. Prior to this exhibition, the predominant landscape aesthetic was that of photographers like Ansel Adams, who concentrated on the raw beauty of nature. One can understand how viewers that were used to beautifully composed scenic landscapes would have been shocked by these images by the new topographic photographers. I think these two quotes by Ansel Adams and new topographics photographer Robert Adams highlights their almost polar opposite views on how to approach landscape photography. The photographers shown in this exhibition started to work in a way that was influenced by modernist photography, which was a paradigm shift and break away from the pictorialist view of life around one. The act of taking a photograph and the photographer's presence became elevated above the scenic value of the subject matter. So their commentary was primarily intellectual, but the reason that this visual approach gained traction was due to their strong and very distinctive aesthetic. These photographers broke all the rules that the pictorial photographers had followed. Often their photographs were taken in the middle of the day when the light was flat and lifeless. The horizon can often be found in the middle of the frame, whereas the pictorialists would probably choose the top third or the bottom third to place it. I think the most obvious and striking shift was that their subject matter is hard to look at and is often bleak. One of the most frequent criticisms of this work is the lack of human presence. And Lewis Boltz, one of the new topographic photographers, answered this question in this way. In my work there is so much evidence of human effort. The place for people in my work is the viewer. So for him, the act of communicating what he sees and how he feels about a landscape, as well as his commentary about our collective disregard for the environment, is a deep communication between humans and about humans. Robert Adams confronts the criticism about a lack of beauty within this work. He says, beauty for me is a word for wholeness. So what he's searching for in his images is when all the elements within the frame come together to make a cohesive whole. I think with all of these photographers, they're using this form of expression in order to communicate their feelings about our lack of respect for the environment. So the act of taking these photographs, whether consciously or unconsciously, is a way of controlling the environment and making things right within the frame. So in a way, these photographers are projecting their feelings of discomfort onto the viewers, but one could also take another view in that they are communicating in a similar way to photojournalists. They are going out into the world, looking at a particular subject and reporting back to the viewers on how they feel about it. During the half century since this landmark exhibition, the visual aesthetic has, I think, split into various subgenres. The most traditional of which is the ongoing documentation of urbanization. Another spin-off is what has come to be known as decay porn. It's tempting to get caught up in the sensuality and external beauty of these photographs, but in comparison it's a bit like a quick dopamine hit. They spark memories and associations which bring up strong feelings like nostalgia and of course loss. But compared to the new topographics, they make no statement about challenging the status quo. Some photographers seem to get trapped within this rabbit hole of nostalgia. 
but one lands up then repeating the same communication of remembrance. The new topographic vision was probably taken to its extreme by John Gossage in his 1985 book The Pond. The book focuses on a small neglected wooden area on the edge of a town. There are 51 pages of very low impact images. Even though this book does grow on one over time, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who's just gaining a taste for new topographics. Another offshoot has been the focus on the brutalist architecture in a number of countries, but predominantly in the former Soviet Union. Unlike the original theme of new topographics, which focus particularly on the unconscious aspect of our structures, the brutalist architecture of the communist era was purposely employed in order to accentuate a certain aspect of their ideology. So these scenes exhibit the intentional brutalization rather than the unmindful. What follows is a selection from my Scratching the Surface essay in which I look at the rapid urbanization as well as social and political change within South Africa. This essay draws on the visual language employed by the new topographic photographers. I hope you found something informative or interesting in this video and please join me next time. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.